Today we are joined by uh, Senior Program Officer Chayla Scott Weber, who will be talking about our work in Special Collections and Archives, uh, work that we've done in the past, work that we've done recently, and work that we have uh, planned possible future directions uh, for our work. And as I mentioned, this webinar will be a bit different from the usual in that we are inviting you to join in the conversation. Um, so uh, when, you, when you have questions at the end of Chela's presentation, you can raise your hand and I will unmute you or you can go ahead and submit those questions via chat. So I am going to uh, switch slide decks here and then hand the controls over to Chela so that she can uh, lead us in um, some informational, uh, some information. <laughs> Take it away, Chela. <laughs> Thanks, Marilee. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I'm glad to see, um, attend, uh, see the attendance. Um, I'll apologize in advance. It seems that they are doing a little bit of light construction, maybe, in the room upstairs from us. Um, it isn't too loud, but if you hear a little bit of clanging, um, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, and I'm powerless to change it. Um, so, um, so my name is Chayla we Scott Weber. I am a senior program officer here at OCLC Research, um, and I am going to be talking to you um, today a little bit about um, the work that we've been doing uh, in special collections and archives over the past year, and specifically about the uh, research and learning agenda for archives and special archives, special and distinctive collections and research libraries that um, that came out last uh, October. Um, so welcome and thank you uh, for being here. Um, I'll start with giving uh, giving you a little bit of context about how this work fits into a trajectory of OCLC research work around special collections, and then we'll take a little bit of a close look at the um, the findings of the agenda itself. Um, and then I'll mention a few next steps that we've already identified and opportunities for participation for RLP members. And then we'll, um, as Marilee talked about, we'll open it up to questions and um, conversation with all of you. So um, as you likely already know, but just in case you don't, um, the Research Library Partnership is one part of the OCLC Research and Membership Division. Um, which, is, which in turn is just one division within the larger OCLC organization. Uh, it's a collaborative network of research libraries, including large research universities, independent research libraries, and college libraries um, in institutions across the Americas, the UK, Australia, and Asia. It provides an opportunity for collaboration across this network, and program officers like Marilee and myself um, work to listen for common issues across those institutions and do research and organize collaboration on behalf of the partnership. Um, and so the work we're talking about tonight is a reflection of some of that listening and, and collaborating. Um, the, the OCLC research has a long history of work in the area of archives and special collections. Um, we work in special collections because they're an important site of knowledge creation um, which is made possible by libraries' commitments to the stewardship of their distinct collect distinctive collections. The unique nature of material in special collections can make scaling up a challenge, and we really work to identify common areas of need and patterns of innovation so that we can help uh, libraries throughout the partnership kind of scale that learning and expertise up with these collections. Um, in 2009, OCLC Research undertook a detailed survey of over 275 archives and special collections in research and academic libraries. And that work and the resulting paper by Jackie Dooley um, taking our pulse really helped to shape the work OCLC Research and the RLP did for years to come, including a broad range of work centering on how to make special collections more accessible, a series on demystifying working with born digital collections, um, and other work. So, this agenda that I'm here to talk to you about today was really kind of a, um, in many ways, a follow-up to Taking Our Pulse. We wanted to use it to pause and reflect on what still held true from that work, what issues have largely been addressed, and what new challenges and opportunities had emerged 
since 2009. So, so that um, we could use that to help us think about where we should be placing time and effort of OCLC research with regards to archives and special collections. Um, the process uh, for um, creating the agenda was um, a little bit different than the way we usually work. It was really situated as being a community look. It leveraged our expertise within the RLP, but represents not just our work, but concerns um, of many other stakeholders as well. And we recognize that um, some of the areas outlined in, in the agenda um, might not be well suited for, for OCLC to work in, and that other stakeholders might, might be the strongest to lead on certain issues. Um, and with this community-wide kind of intention, the, the agenda was created um, with lots of opportunities for participation. Uh, I consulted regularly with an advisory group throughout the, uh, every two weeks throughout its creation, which was a group of um, heads of special collections and uh, assistant university librarians. Um, I also had focused conversations with colleagues across kind of all levels of experience and, expert level and areas of expertise um, within special collections and archives. And then we conducted invited workshops for early stage drafts of the agenda at both the RBMS and SAA uh, conferences in 2017, as well as had a month-long open community comment period um, where we posted the, the uh, late-stage draft online um, as a Google Doc for people to comment on and got a lot of really useful feedback that, that way, too. So the result is a document that really, I think, speaks to the current state of play and highlights top of mind and emerging, emerging challenges in this space. Um, the agenda itself is organized into potential areas of investigation, and then within each area has suggestions for activities um, to, a, to address the needs. Um, so I'm going to walk you through a summary view of all of those areas of investigation with kind of broad strokes information about, um, uh, about the suggested activities. So the first area of, in, of investigation is the convergence of special collections in the research library. Um, we are increasingly recognizing a convergence of goals, services, skill sets, and collections across both the gen general and special collections. We're seeing a growing emphasis on supporting teaching and learning, and that's impacting service in, in both areas. Um, the evolving scholarly record means that general collections are adding things that look much more like special collections, including things like data sets, gray and ephemeral literature, and um, all, uh, both areas are kind of grappling with providing discovery and access to these increasingly kind of diverse collections. Uh, the agenda identifies areas where special collections professionals can collaborate with colleagues throughout the library, including instruction, collection development, and supporting uh, emergent computational access and research method methodologies. And building on another uh, position paper from, from the RLP, the Archival Advantage, it also identifies strengths within archives and special collections that can be valuable across the library, the library including appraisal, donor relation skills, inquiry-based instruction skills, and digital preservation. Um, the challenge in this area is, is um, programmatic, it's structural, and it's, it's kind of political and emotional. Um, whereas, you know, we, in many cases, special collections have been traditionally siloed in terms of their identities and their organizational structures, and future work needs to kind of push past that um, to focus on aligning goals for archival units and special collections units with that of the larger parent uh, or larger parent organization or library. Um, the next area of investigation is advocating for archives and special collections. Um, and in some ways, this is really closely tied to that first area of investigation. So if the first area of investigation is about reconceptualizing the value of archives and special collections, um, in the research library, this area is really about the need to better advocate for that value. Um, and what we heard a lot in conversations during creating the agenda was that while there's been a lot of lip service paid to the value of special collections and distinguishing the research library, 
that hasn't consistently translated to resources for special collections. And we're still seeing a really heavy reliance on soft monies in special collections that can really mask ongoing and operational need. So suggested activities in this area address skills and advocacy in building data sets to back up that advocacy and trying to understand the true landscape of resource allocation to special collections. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the next area of investigation is, is next steps for Born Digital. Um, we know that, that Born Digital collections have grown exponentially in the past decade, and the needs in this area reflect kind of growth from, from pilot to program phases um, for electronic records programs. Um, much early, record, early work in this area focused on capture of data from physical media and the work necessary at kind of the earliest stages of steward, stewarding digital collections to ensure authenticity and preservation. Um, but the next steps really need to address kind of the full array of activities that come before and after that, that capture. Um, and similarly, many uh, early electronic program, records programs focused on advocating for a digital archivist position. And this area identifies a need for moving beyond the single digital archivist to building distributed models of responsibility for born digital archival programs, as well as finding cohorts across the research library where complementary work is happening. Um, and so activities in this, this area address both programmatic and structural challenges facing our born digital programs. The next area of investigation is addressing audiovisual collections. Um, AV holdings continue to be a top concern in archival repositories, both because of evolving modes of scholarship in which these are increasingly valuable and sought after resources, and because of preservation concern that many AV formats are at or near end of life. Um, and the volume of AV holdings uh, is really staggering and often exceeds the ability um, to do preservation reformatting from, from many institutions. Additionally, there's a lot of poor legacy practice and collections management for this, these formats, that mean, uh, which means that AV collections are, not, are often not well enough to managed or understood to, to be able to kind of make informed decisions about their, their care in a holistic manner. So activities in this area concentrate on appraisal of AV, how to integrate AV collections into mainstream collection workflows, and, um, and both so we can better allocate resources for, for preservation and then we can better understand researcher access needs to these collections. The, the next area of investigation is, uh, revolves around our evolving systems environments. Um, we have really seen a proliferation of, of systems um, necessary to do our work. We see collections management systems, digital asset management. We often have multiple catalogs or discovery layers, um, request and circulation management systems, and then the entire suite of tools that are needed uh, for working with born digital materials. And the need isn't just for these systems um, to be managed and, and, uh, and used, but it's um, to manage our data as it flows in, out, in, to, out of, and through <laughs> these systems. We're asking our data to support an increasing array of functionality, and we're asking our staff to be increasingly data fluent. Um, so activities in this area focus on data literacy, data collection strategies for reporting and assessment, uh, systems integration and interaction issues, and participation in and sustainability of open source software communities. The next area of investigation is stewardship responsibilities and collection management. Um, backlogs of un- and underdescribed and inaccessible collections continue to plague archives and special collections. Um, and backlogs aren't just an issue because they impede access. Um, but also because they impede our ability to make responsible and programmatic decisions about collection management, collection development, and resource allocation broadly. Um, and large backlogs also impede efforts to advocate for special collections. So activities in this area um, 
outline a, a variety of strategies to continue to try to chip away at backlogs. Um, they can, uh, continued work on building modern and extensible processing programs, um, reconceptualizing the, the goals and activities done at, at accessioning, um, renewed energy toward appraisal, and generally looking more closely at backlogs to better understand the nature of the problem in order to better address it. And, um, and the next area of uh, investigation is engaging the challenges of diversifying our collections. Um, there is a growing and significant interest in issues of equity, diversity, uh, and inclusion in, in research libraries uh, broadly and in special collections specifically, this manifests, this often manifests in an interest uh, in ensuring that our collections broadly and equitably document human experience and empower a wide public to see themselves as part of the historical record. Um, this is driven by changes in cultural and historical scholarship, as well as a, a true and growing awareness that of the many negative social and scholarly impacts of, the, of our current uh, asymmetrical historical record. There's also an increasing recognition that documentation is being produced and collected outside of traditional institutions. And this is resulting in a desire to collaborate with community archives groups, working to preserve their own histories as one way to address the representative holes in our collections. Um, activities in this area recognize that in order to respectfully and responsibly work with marginalized communities and those communities who've been working to document their own histories, research libraries really need to um, examine and reconsider institutional and interpersonal relationships and consider power dynamics and identify methods of working that acknowledge and, and mitigate power imbalances. Um, as well as um, they also seek to explore moving from a framework of stewardship to one of partnership with a willingness to explore collaborative consortial approaches to collection building. Um, so that, uh, that's a summary of all of the areas of investigation. Um, across these, these areas of investigation, there are some overarching themes, and I'd like to take a minute to just to call those out. Um, structural and organizational positioning um, issues throughout the agenda really point to kind of a further evolution of organizational structures. We've, we've seen in the last decade or so um, some important shifts in the way that archives and special collections are organized. Um, you know, uh, institutions with multiple special collections units have often been merging into one. In some um, universities, special collections are coming under uh, um, an, a distinctive collections umbrella um, in recognition of aligned interests and needs with area studies or other specialized co uh, collections. But we're seeing um, possibilities for even further evolution of these organizational structures, things like including special collection staff on li library leadership teams to better facilitate alignment with the core goals of the organization, rethinking structures within special collections to, dis to distribute responsibility for born digital materials more evenly, or um, possibly creating formalized cohorts across the library with shared interests and complementary skills in areas where there's strong mission alignment, such as instruction, collection de development, or digital collections. Um, equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility really doesn't begin and end with diversifying collections. It really encourages reexamination of practice across the enterprise. Um, our, for example, our backlogs invite questions about how our collection mis management decisions can further bury or eliminate the histories of marginalized people. Um, there's a real interest in critical engagement with our technological tools and systems and their underlying value assumptions. This is particularly true for the digital forensics tools that we are borrowing from law enforcement and using in our, uh, in our born digital records programs. Um, Really nearly every aspect of our work can better serve the goals of building an equitable, inclusive, and diverse profession and collections uh, that are broadly representative and accessible. Um, appraisal is, uh, is a core function that really runs through almost all of our suggested areas of investigation, 
Born digital and AV formats require new tools and frameworks for appraisal practice. Our continued backlogs and resource challenges require really a renewed energy be put toward appraisal and reappraisal as part of comprehensive strategies for stewardship obligations. And the evolving nature of the scholarly record and research library interest in collecting outside traditional acquisition channels means that archivists' appraisal knowledge can, can also benefit work outside of the archives. Um, access to collections, uh, as our collections evolve and as our, our users and their research methodologies become increasingly sophisticated, it's really necessitating us to rethink our goals and the scope of our access and discovery systems. Um, there's a growing interest in collections as data and um, computational access to collections. AV and born digital are, um, you know, alongside uh, digi large bodies of uh, digital surrogates of analog collections um, are all kind of needing to be served in the same systems. Um, and so, uh, so access to collections continues to kind of evolve and, and be an ongoing need. Um, and data and systems, uh, as I've already touched on, the, our increasingly digital environment is shaping our practice and revealing new problems and possibilities. Um, digital tools are omnipresent um, and our evolving user expert expectations for discovery systems are causing us to examine what descriptive metadata practices uh, we need to ensure to support those needs. Um, so we're really, uh, data and systems are touching on our ability to do all variety of collection management, uh, collection development, <clears throat> and, uh, and advocacy. Um, so that is uh, a, I think that's a good summary of the, the research and learning agenda. Um, I'll talk for a second here about next steps. Um, we, the agenda is admittedly US-centric, and we want to use it as a starting point to engage with colleagues in the UK, Canada, Australia, and Asia um, to ask how their experiences are or not or are not reflected um, in the document, and we'd love to hear from you in the discussion on ways we might further push those conversations along. Um, we want to encourage action from and collaboration with allied organizations. As I mentioned earlier, um, there's far more in the agenda than OCLC has the capacity or, or really the, the um, skill to lead all of it. So we uh, would like to use the agenda as a, a platform to engage in conversations with allied organizations to hear about where their priorities are, what, uh, what of this work they might be best situated to lead, and how we might collaborate. And we've started having those, and we'll continue to have those conversations. Um, we also want to highlight forward-thinking work related to the areas of investigation. Um, we have a, a upcoming series of webinars over the next um, nine months uh, that will highlight some of the issues brought up, in specifically archival accessioning, collections as data, and uh, scaling up instruction with uh, primary sources. Um, and if you have high, uh, work going on at your institution that you think might be um, interesting to, uh, to colleagues across the RLP, please do feel free to be in touch. Um, and then there are some specific uh, RLP opportunities coming up. Um, I put out a call today for a new working group we're spinning up um, about collection building and operational impacts uh, for a, Collection, bringing in collections in, um, in archives and special collections. Uh, we've seen a lot of work in archives and special collections in the last decade around efficient uh, processing and cataloging methodologies, but it's really only made a dent in backlogs. So we'd like to look at the kind of the supply side of that equation and think about um, the impacts of collections as they come in, what, what the true cost or the total cost of ownership is, not just the kind of acquisition price, but what the labor necessary to, to catalog, to preserve, to digitize, to store, um, to try to kind of quantify some of that have, um, and bring together collection management and collection development colleagues together in conversation so that, that these, um, uh, these 
sort of operational realities are a part of the appraisal picture for bringing in new collections. Um, there are also a couple of interest groups that might be uh, of interest <laughs> um, to folks. Um, my colleague Rebecca Bryant will be starting a research data management interest group in the next um, in the next week or two. There will be announcements on on our email lists about that. Um, and this is an area that I think um, can might be really interesting, where there's a uh, there's potential overlap in shared interest with archives and records management, particularly those dealing with electronic records. Um, so it might be something that would be interesting to buddy up with somebody in your library and, and be a part of the uh, interest group together. Um, Merrily is running a Wikimedia interest group for folks who are uh, doing work with Wikimedia and Wikipedia. Um, and there's a real in, uh, there's a really interesting cross section of people in that group and ways and and they're sharing the ways in which they're working with these tools. Um, and last but not least, there are some webinars, a series of webinars around assessment um, that uh, I believe two are done and the third is uh, coming up shortly. But all of the recordings are available online. Um, assessment is a big part of the advocacy discussion within the agenda, so um, for those of you interested in, in advocacy and assessment, it might be a nice kind of uh, place to start those conversations or start thinking about that. Um, so thank you, <laughs> and, uh, and we will um, turn it over to, uh, to all of us now for questions and discussions.